People always say, I'm the Beatle who changed the most, but really that's what I see life is about. That the planet is in the control of mad people. The soul is in this body for a period of time and then it leaves the body. It's like, in a way, the body is like a suit. George Harrison is a man who needs no introduction. He passed away November 29th, 2001 at the age of 58. He left behind one of the biggest musical legacies of all time, but also an abundance of philosophical and spiritual knowledge. His intellect on worldviews only grows in relevance as time goes on. You know, I, I'm unhappy about the world being concreted over and all the forests chopped down and the air polluted and that the fact that the planet is in the control of mad people. You know, people who are crazy, people who are greedy, all these people who are selling the rainforest and, you know, any forests, just selling it because they make some money without, you know, I'm very unhappy about that, but I have a, a long-term view, which is all things must pass. I mean, before it used to be, maybe they're gonna blow us up with H-bombs. But even that, I thought, it don't really matter. They can't destroy what's within ourselves. Krishna said, there's no time when we didn't exist, and there'll be no time when we cease to exist. The only thing that changes is the body. So even if they blew us up with H-bombs, our soul will stay in our other astral body and the only thing that won't be here is physical. So, you know, I'm sad about it, um, the world, but I look at it from within and without. In 1968, George traveled to northern India alongside the Beatles, where they took part in transcendental meditation training with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. This is a technique George kept with him for many years to come. Although George learned more than just meditation in India, this trip also helped craft his views on religion and spirituality. I happened to get into meditation through uh, music, really, Indian music. And uh, I went to India to learn a bit of Indian music and Inside, I always had uh, a desire to know about yogis, and I don't can't explain that one. It's just something that's been in me from some time in the past, and I wanted to know about that. So I had the opportunity to uh, find out about it in India, and consequently, that led into meditation because really the only reason to be living is to uh, have complete full knowledge, full bliss consciousness. Everything else is just mundane and secondary. I wanted to know some method of enlarging my own consciousness, and that's meditation. It's been there millions, millions of years, and uh, not can the door be opened. The thing that really got me interested was after being brought up as uh, a Catholic until I was about 13, I couldn't take it any longer because it was just full of hypocrisy. The teachings of an Indian uh, called Vivekananda, which really impressed me, he said, if there's a God, we must see him. If there's a soul, we must perceive it. Otherwise, it's better not to believe. It's better to be an outspoken atheist than a hypocrite. So this, for me, going to India and hearing somebody saying, you know, no, you can't believe anything until you have direct perception of it. And I thought, wow, you know, fantastic at last, you know, find somebody who, who um, makes some sense. And so I wanted to go deeper and deeper into that. The whole basis of religion is to have the experience, have that perception. So there's these methods for God perception, self-realization, which is yoga and meditation and the process you have to get from a spiritual master, somebody who is an authority on this sort of thing. And the technique we did with uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was uh, a form of violent meditation, which, you know, you can transcend. The, the, the purpose is to transcend from this relative state of consciousness to an absolute state of consciousness. People think, this is me, you know, and this isn't me, this is just a bag of bones. Basically, everybody is a uh, spirit, which is really what Christ was here to tell everybody about. The kingdom of heaven that lies within, which is the state of being, pure consciousness. Yeah. So, 
through many years of uh, pollution of consciousness through material energy and this association, then uh, we've all ended up in a fallen state. But really, everybody is basically a potentially divine. So yoga, all these methods are really uh, ancient methods just to stir the pollution of your system and consciousness and to cleanse the system. The whole thing, the purity that they talk about in religion is really a, a mental, physical and spiritual purity which is uh, obtained through discipline and through practice. So the meditation we did with uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was uh, to sit silently and to transcend through the sense of sound, like you can transcend with hearing or with touch or taste or vision, like I think some Buddhists meditate by concentrating on like, an object, like either a garden, Japanese gardens, on candles, looking at, into the flame and they transcend that way, but this method was to transcend through sound. So you give them uh, a mantra, the mantra brings all your body to rest. It calms everything down and it, it brings sort of harmony and uh, union just to all your senses. And this way, your thoughts become fine and fine and fine until you can arrive at a point which is transcendental which means beyond, it's beyond the senses, beyond intellect. People always say, I'm the beetle who changed the most, but really that's what I see life is about. Unless you're God conscious, then you have to change because, because it's a waste of time. Everybody is so limited and so, really useless when you think of, about the limitations on yourself and the whole thing is to change try and make everything better and better and that's what the physical world is about it's change change that happens through uh, meditation i mean it's a, it's a gradual sort of thing but the more you realize <clears throat> with anything with just growing older the more you realize it helps you in some way with meditation you're able to understand that there is this unity lying beneath everything there's something there within every atom that holds it all together and that in actual fact it really is one but on an intellectual level to say it is we are one then i mean again you miss the point it's an experience you have to really have that perception maharishi said for a forest to be green each tree must be green so if you stand back and criticize the rest of the people it's again Christ said put your own house in order automatically if I'm to criticize somebody else I suddenly come back to myself and realize until I'm straight then I'm in no position to be able to criticize others any time of the day any situation you're in you can get control of yourself just by sitting quietly and by turning off from the external problems we have noise and all this society that you can go inside yourself where it's always calm and peaceful on this level of consciousness it's like the ocean which is always changing and the bottom of the ocean is always calm and still and if you're not anchored to the bottom of the ocean you're at the mercy of whatever change goes on so that you can still act out your life on the surface but you remain anchored securely When asked about astral projection, he relates back to experiences he had during meditation. His views on astral projection and death also seem to carry similar traits. A strange experience when I was in Rishikesh, I went on a meditation course where the object was to meditate deeper and deeper and deeper for longer periods of time, to plug into the divine energy and to raise your state of consciousness and tune in to the subtler states of consciousness and all those things like walking on the water and dematerializing your body at will are just sort of things that happen along the way. So it's hard to actually uh, explain it, but it was just a feeling of just the consciousness traveling. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to, and I wasn't up, down, left or right. No body there, but at the same time, you don't feel as though you're missing anything. You know, the consciousness is complete. 
how I see it is that the soul is in this body for a period of time and then it leaves the body. It's like, in a way, the body is like a suit that you put on. Do you know, have any idea where it goes? Yeah. Christ said in the Bible about the three cages for the bird of paradise, which is the soul being the bird of paradise and the three cages being the three bodies that um, house the soul and there's the, they call it the causal body and then around that's the astral body and then there's the gross physical body. So death is really when the physical body falls off, but the soul is still in two other bodies, so it's then on the astral level. Do you think life is all predetermined? In some respects it is, although we do have control over our actions at the right at this moment. I think what we are now is the result of our past actions. What we're going to be is going to be the result of our present actions. As again they said in the Bible, that God is not mocked, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That means the law of karma, action, reaction. So, so we can, there's certain things that maybe there's no way out, like there's no way I wasn't going to be in the Beatles, even though I didn't know it. In retrospect, I can see it was a setter. But at the same time, I do have control over my actions and I can, you know, do good actions or bad actions, or I, like I said, I could try being a pop star forever and going on TV and do concerts and be a celebrity, or I can be a gardener.